The Testimony of a Prophet by Gerald W. Peterson, Sr. Extracts from the History and Testimony of Gerald W. Peterson, Sr. Concerning the Succession of the Keys of the Priesthood What I discuss is sure to upset some people, for it challenges their most favored games and their foundation of belief in their church and its leaders. First, a little of my history. I was born of goodly parents on October 8, 1917, at Lusk, Wyoming, and lived on a cattle ranch until the age of 10 years, at which time my father, Peter Peterson, moved to Midville, Utah, in Cache County, where we farmed 60 acres of row crops. We as a family did not belong to the Mormon church. Although we lived and associated among them, I attended the Mormon church services, excelled in the Boy Scout program, and attended the grade school and high school in that valley. At the age of 16 years, I met the girl who later became my wife after a two-year courtship. During this time, I was converted to and joined the LDS church and did receive the Holy Ghost, which gifts were immediately manifested in my life to the wonderment of those around me who did not have the Holy Ghost, although they were church members for years. It, the Holy Ghost, taught me by way of visions, dreams, prophecy, and all the gifts of the Spirit. Because of this, I have enjoyed what the prophets of the New Testament and other holy scriptures say the members of Christ's church are supposed to enjoy. And I testify that the gospel is true in every phase of it. However, on the other hand, I also testify that the Salt Lake City church leaders are leading us on to the very brink of apostasy, as Brigham Young testified in 1867 they would do when he spoke at state conference in Provo, Utah. A year later after my baptism, I was ordained a member of the Melchizedek Priesthood to the office of an elder. I was one of the few after 1928 who did receive the priesthood by proper ordination, inasmuch as it was the rule of the church at that time to only ordain to office and not confer the priesthood. I did receive good instruction and experience because I did have the Holy Ghost. I have received divine revelation and ministry of angels, including the presence of the Father and Son, and have been commissioned to find the keys of the Holy Melchizedek Priesthood in the hands of a man living in the flesh. This man was not the president of the church, as we LDS would suppose. The keys of the priesthood were given to Joseph Smith Jr. by revelation, see D&C 110, and he gave them to those who followed him in succession, Brigham Young, John Taylor, Wilford Woodruff, Lorenzo Snow, and Joseph F. Smith, the sixth president of the church. The keys were not given to any of the other presidents of the church after the sixth. Unlike most people think, for the church had gone so far into apostasy and were refusing to live higher laws of the gospel, so God transferred the keys to a group of men who did keep alive the true higher principles of the gospel. Many have never considered the fact that there are two ways, not one way, in which a man may receive authority, or the keys of the priesthood, to act for God on the earth. One by the traditional way of it descending upon the next man in line of ordination. 2. By the direct intervention of God. According to tradition, Jesus Christ did not hold the keys of the priesthood, but Joseph Smith Jr. said that Jesus did hold the keys. In order for Christ to have held the keys, according to tradition, Caiaphas, the great high priest of the Jews, would have had to lay his hands on Jesus and ordain him apart to hold the keys. Jesus was an apostate from the Jewish church, Israelite, and did not so receive the keys. According to tradition, Joseph Smith Jr. did not hold the keys, which he would have had to have received from the Catholic Pope at Rome. According to tradition, Rule and Allred did not have the keys, because it was out of order. Guy Musser was next in line and should have held them. According to tradition, Owen Allred should have received the keys. Guy Musser and the group at Colorado City and those who came out after they split do not hold the keys because they rebelled against the man who held the keys, Joseph Musser. They were replaced by the Lord through Joseph Musser setting rule and all right in their place, together with others which he had also set apart. Owen Allred and the others at Bluffdale do not hold the keys for a similar reason 
In life they rebelled against rule in Allred, and lost the keys, although like the group at Colorado City, they think they still have the keys. Those who follow him do so in blindness, as do the people at Colorado City. Only by the Holy Ghost can anyone know where the keys of the priesthood are, and those keys are still on the earth today, in the hands of a mortal man, who does live all the principles of the gospel, and is truly a prophet, seer, and revelator. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. As a man soweth, even so shall he reap. It is imperative that we have the Holy Ghost. And how do we obtain it? Or how will we know we have it? Some will say, well, it was conferred upon me at the time I was baptized. Therefore, I have it. Not so. It may descend upon a person and depart immediately, taught Joseph Smith and Brigham Young. When one has the Holy Ghost, the gifts of the Spirit are apparent to themselves and often to others. Read what those gifts are in the scriptures. 1 Corinthians 12, Moroni 10, D&C 46, etc. To obtain the Holy Ghost, we must offer a certain sacrifice, mentioned in D&C section 59, verse 8, as commanded. Also, in chapter 9, verse 20, of the book of 3rd Nephi in the Book of Mormon. This sacrifice is the same as the second principle of the gospel, repentance. But it is much more than most people think, for it is the complete giving up of all things, including our own opinions, etc., to the Lord, even as a little child. Very few indeed have ever made this sacrifice, and thus very few have the Holy Ghost and thus they wander in darkness at midday, not knowing that they are in darkness. This means you, wake up, ye that sleepeth, for unless and until you have offered this certain sacrifice, you cannot know for a surety that the course of life you are pursuing is pleasing to God, and in due time will apostatize from the truth, and leave the work of God. One of the council at Bluffdale recently demonstrated this very principle by leaving a large family and the work which he formerly professed was the work of the Lord under rule in all red. It is useless for anyone to spend hours, days, weeks, months, and years studying the gospel and gospel-related literature until and unless they first obtain the Holy Ghost, for without it, it is impossible to understand the things of God and His Christ when it has been given that not more than 3% of the people in the church and or the priesthood groups have the Holy Ghost, should it not cause us to pause and truly consider whether we really have it? Not more than 3 out of 100 people really know and not just think they know. A very sobering thought. The major reason the LDS Church has fallen into a state of apostasy is due to the failure of the leaders and members not being taught that they had to make a certain sacrifice, above referred to, in order to have the Holy Ghost. If they, the members, had had the Holy Ghost, they would have early detected that their leaders were in apostasy and would have refused to follow them. But not having the saving gift, they were easily led by the blind, and they with their leaders will fall into the ditch together. The call is here, to be called out of the church, into the branch church, which God in His wisdom has prophesied through His prophets would come in our day. Those who have the Holy Ghost will come. The others will remain in Babylon, bound in bundles of government rules, regulations, and laws to be literally burned. Those on the hand who have the Holy Ghost will gather into cities of Zion to be saved and prepare to meet the Savior when He comes in the clouds of heaven. Praise the Lord! I have studied deeply the history of the church and sought the Lord in prayer and in the year 1939, learned to receive direct revelations from the Lord, which guided me through my life to this day. The miracles due to such contact with heaven have made a long story, but which will not be entered in this record due to space considerations. In the fall of 1964, I was asked to work in the office of Roland C. Allred at Murray, Utah. For two years, I was under his immediate supervision and counsel, he said I had received more experience and information in one year with him than most of the men in the council and the group of the priesthood would in their whole lifetime. He also said that he and I would stand side by side throughout this life and the next, and that if we would prepare ourselves, that God had a great work for us to do together in the immediate future in the priesthood. February 6, 1965 
On September 21st, 1955, while living in Richmond, Utah, my father died, and at this time I suffered a severe sickness, which caused me to be so weak at the time that I was confined to my bed. While in this condition, my spirit was taken out of my body, four feet in the air, and the Lord asked me if I would accept a mission he had in store for me. I told him that if he would tell me what it was, I would let him know. He said, no, you must make your decision without that information. I thought it over and said, yes, I will do it. Then for half an hour, he gave me information relative to my coming mission on the earth and told me that I could not divulge it to any living person without his permission and that my calling was like unto the apostle John, that I would be immortal during most of my earthly mission and that I would labor bringing souls unto Christ. Former saints will return and assist mortals in the last days. The Lord withdrew his presence, and my spirit once again entered my body, lying on the couch beneath. Shortly afterward, the mission I was given was taken from me, or my memory of it was removed, and only the last few thoughts remained, until I was given the keys of the priesthood by Roland C. Allred, when it all returned to me again. For that was the mission which had been given to me in advance, but which I was not to fill until the later date. I suffered long about my mission, not knowing what it was, and on a later occasion at the home of Ivan Baker in Lehigh, Utah, 82571, I received a blessing at the hands of Apostle George Maycock, which contained an identical line which I had previously received at the time my father died. The blessing by Brother Maycock follows. No, this is not the complete blessing, but only that portion pertaining to this epistle. Quote, We say unto you that you yet have a mission to fill in the earth, and if you want to know what it is, apply to Roland C. Allred, who has this mission for you, and has had it for several years, and has waited for your heart and your hand, and he will reveal it unto you. And if you will be prayerful, our Heavenly Father will reveal it unto you in your innermost part, and you shall have it confirmed. Two witnesses will bear you out, and you shall labor for the rest of your life in this mission, bringing souls unto Christ setting your own life and your own house in order, bringing happiness and joy, worlds without end, unto you and yours. And your Father in heaven will permit you to help glorify him hereby. We perform this ordinance in your behalf by virtue of the priesthood we bear and in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Quote, I did as directed, and I took the blessing to rule in all red, and he said it was true and of the Holy Ghost and gave me my mission. He said the time had not come, however, for it to be activated, but I must wait. Since my moving to Salt Lake City and working with Roland C. Allred in his office in Murray, Utah, the members of the council repeatedly made verbal attacks against me, and I have been accused of apostasy. I have been accused of not paying my tithing and not attending meetings. I was spoken ill of on every hand. Why? Was it because of the coming position in the priesthood and the devil knowing this inspired men to resist me? Only God knows. Brother Roland Allred often counseled with me relative to the work and kept me informed as to what was transpiring relative to the work of the Lord. Before the time he was killed, he told me and the order which he told me to form of from 10 to 30 families to discontinue coming to the meetings at Bluffdale and move our orders to southern Utah, which we did. We also were told to not pay our tithing to the men at Bluffdell. This, of course, caused us to be spoken ill of, and of course they did not know Brother Roland had told us this. Roland already did lay his hands upon my head and ordained me to the office of a high priest apostle, a patriarch in Israel, and gave unto me the keys of the holy priesthood and keys of Elijah the prophet, with all the rights, keys, powers, and authority pertaining to the office of one like unto Moses who is supposed to lead the priesthood and church in these last days, and to lead the escaped of Israel back to the promised land of Jackson County, Missouri, prior to the coming of the Savior in the clouds of heaven. He did this because the Lord made it known to him that the keys would not remain with the council which he headed at Bluffdale, due to their rebellion against the word of the Lord through himself, Roland C. Allred. The work of the Lord had to continue, and has continued since his martyrdom, the history of the Church of Jesus Christ, down through the ages, has been one of rise and fall. For it seems the nature of almost all men, when they have a little authority as they suppose, begin to take the direction in their own hands, and forget what the God of heaven has told them to do. So it has been in these latter days, with the restoration of the gospel, under the direction and guidance of Joseph Smith Jr. the prophet, he restored the gospel to its fullness 
and in its perfection, he in no way tried to change the gospel or its ordinances. Neither did the other presidents of the church, down to and including the third president, John Taylor. However, after that, due to severe persecution by the United States government officials and the weaknesses of the saints, pressure was brought to bear upon the officials of the LDS Church, which caused them to forget what God had said and thereby issue proclamations, changing the church and its doctrines and regulations, thus pleasing the enemy of the church and its false Christ. Since 1890, the changes, apostasy, of the Mormon LDS Church have been a gradual but consistent process which caused the Lord, even Jesus Christ, to withdraw his favor and priesthood from the church, thus making the ordinances and saving power of the church and priesthood in the church of no avail with God. Now, because the Lord foresaw these events, he prophesied by the prophet Isaiah and the Book of Mormon prophets that he, God, would not forget the faithful in these latter days, but would provide for them a branch of his true church which would offer to his saints the fullness of the gospel, that they might be prepared to meet him at his coming in the clouds of heaven. I now declare to the entire world that the resurrected prophet Joseph Smith Jr. has returned to perform the duty of setting the house of God in order as promised in the 85th section of the Doctrine and Covenants. Under the direction of Jesus Christ, Joseph Smith Jr. has reorganized the priesthood council of the Lord also the Church of Christ, and will in due time organize the kingdom of God. The Lord has called and ordained a prophet of the living God to minister in the flesh, under the direction of the Godhead as was intended in the beginning. The Church in its newly organized branch will incorporate all the original doctrines, ordinances, and functions as given by Jesus Christ to Joseph Smith, Jr. Under the immediate direction of Roland C. Allred, Acting by revelation through the veil under the direction of the prophet Joseph Smith Jr., who heads this dispensation, I, Gerald W. Peterson Sr., have reorganized another council and the first presidency of the church. The church is now called by another name, as foretold by the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah 62, 2, and 65, 15. Even the name of Christ Church, also the council of the twelve apostles, the first council of seventy, etc., the Church, Christ Church, also called the Righteous Branch of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, was organized April 6, 1978 at Provo, Utah, two years to the day after the Star of Bethlehem appeared for the second time in history on April 6, 1976. Brother Roland set me apart to my mission while he was still in the flesh. We have had the gifts of the Spirit and the ministry of angels, for many have come, both as translated and resurrected beings, such as the angel Moroni, Moses, Elijah the prophet, the prophet Joseph Smith Jr., Father Michael, and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Joseph Smith Jr., the one mighty and strong, who holds the keys of this last dispensation, is setting the house of God in order, as indicated above. See section 85 of the DNC. It has been said of my calling that it is false because of many accusations. They have said, where are the witnesses? Witnesses to what? Perhaps they mean to the setting apart of the priesthood keys. Let us ask, who was present when rule and all red was set apart? Who was present when Jesus Christ was set apart? Who was present when Elijah set Joseph Smith apart with the keys of the ceiling, etc.? Who was present when Moses was set apart? Present when I was set apart were Brother Rulin Allred and three resurrected beings, whose names I am not at liberty to now disclose, inasmuch as they have restrained me from giving that information in this epistle. How can I prove to anyone that the foregoing is true? I cannot, and I do not intend to. My word stands only if the Holy Ghost testifies to anyone of the truth thereof. Rulin Allred could not prove to anyone that he held the keys, any more than I can. Christ said to Peter, Whom saith ye that I the Son of Man am? Peter answered, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Christ said, Peter, flesh and blood have not revealed this unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Only by the witness of the Holy Ghost may anyone know the truth of this matter and all things. See Moroni, chapter 10, of the Book of Mormon. Some have said that as long as the keys are upon the earth, no one is going to be set apart. 
from beyond the veil as though it were a new dispensation. This is true, and I do not contest it at all, inasmuch as the one who held those keys conferred them upon myself. Some have asked, did the one who held the keys have hands that you can fill, flesh and blood hands? Yes, just as real as yours, and they had weight, and were solid, for he ruling was alive, just as I am and you are. In all these questions, people are hanging on to the arm of flesh for their testimonies, and such testimonies will never stand. For unless one has a witness of the Spirit, all else is dross. We cannot go to heaven on the skirts of someone else's testimony. Be we young or old, bond or free, we must know for ourselves. Now as to those who have a testimony of these things, and of where the keys of the priesthood are at, they are numerous. The members of Christ's church have this witness, and the apostles of the council, the twelve, and the first presidency, etc. Within an hour after Roland C. Allred was killed, he was seen entering my office at 381 East Center Street in Provo, Utah. My office referred to is the third floor of the Knight Mangum building. The person who saw him come in my office, of course in the spirit, a spirit body, is living in 1980 and will sustain this evidence. This happened about 5 p.m. on May 10, 1977. He came to where I was sitting in my chair and spoke to me very clearly and plainly. He said, Jerry, I have come to reconfirm your calling and to tell you to begin the mission which you have been waiting for for so long, even that which you were called to when your father died years ago and to which I have formerly set you apart while in the flesh. He laid his hands upon my head and I felt them as real as if they had been fleshly hands. It was no imagination. One of my family was calling me from the city of Sandy. Automatically, I tried to rise up to go answer the phone. Roland pushed me very sharply back down in the chair and said, Jerry, sit still till I'm through. Believe me, I did sit and listen. When he finished, I said to him, suddenly realizing, at least in part, what was being required of me, Brother Roland, I just cannot go ahead with this mission unless I have a greater evidence and proof that I really am called to do this. He said, I will give you a witness. You are healed. Now, for three weeks before this time, I had suffered from a herniated or ruptured disc in my back and could only get up and down and walk with great difficulty when I gave treatments to patients, for I am a doctor and give physical treatments that really twist and strain my back. I suffered living death, for the pain was like a red-hot sword piercing my back and leg, and I had a spot the size of my hand on the upper part of my leg that ached continually and at times was completely numb or paralyzed. When he said, you are healed, I said to him, what do you mean? He said, stand up. Fully expecting to experience the terrible pain, I started to rise slowly, but when I didn't feel pain, I rose rapidly, and I stood full up, and for the first time in three weeks, was free of pain completely. Not believing my senses, I stepped away from the chair, and bent over fully. I squatted down, I did the hula, I twisted, turned, etc., in every conceivable angle, and I had no pain. Roland said, now go in the other room and show the others. In the room across the hall were my wife, Faye, my daughter-in-law, Lana, Bill's wife, and the other members of the family. I said to them, watch what you see and remember it, but I will not tell you anything now. Just watch and remember. I then did all the twists and turns, etc. I had done before and showed them that I was completely free of pain and discomfort I had previously been experiencing, which they were all aware of. I had received a witness I can never deny. Roland lives. He has never left me to this day, and continues to activate the keys through the veil. He told me that the keys consist of the one who previously held the keys, directing the one who holds the keys in the flesh through the veil. And thus it went back to Joseph Musser, and on back through each one to Joseph Smith and Jesus Christ. He said he hoped I would follow his direction better than he had Brother Joseph Musser. Brother Roland had talked with me many times in the spirit while he was still alive in the flesh. When I would need guidance from him, but could not get to him personally to talk with him, I would talk to him in the spirit, and he would answer me. Then when I could talk with him in the flesh, I would ask him the same questions, and he would give me almost identical answers as he had formerly given in the spirit. Since he has been killed, the same voice which I knew was ruling still continues to talk with me and give me the word of the Lord to do his work. He was talking with me when I asked for some other information relative to this work, and he gave me an unrelated answer. The end of ruling. The end of ruling. The end of ruling. I replied, what do you mean? He said, Jerry, the council and Owen have stopped all the projects the Lord told me to start. During the next few weeks, six different men from the group at Bluffdale reported to me 
a confirmation of just what Roland had told me, and I did not solicit such information from them. They were confused because Roland had told them to either head or take a very active part in those projects, and now the council were all against it, including the one who supposedly held the keys. At the present time, 1978, many people are coming to me and letting me know unsolicited that they know where the keys are at here at Provo. Provo, Utah was the site of the visitation to me of Father Michael Adam, who is the God of the earth. He told his prophet that he would send thousands of angels to the members of the church and that they would be moved upon by the Holy Spirit to come into the branch church, Christ Church. Since he told me that, many people have told me that they have had dreams before they knew about me and the work of the Lord we are engaged in, that they were to locate at a city of God in the exact location where we are currently located at in southern Utah. How come? Why? Let each answer it for themselves. We have received hundreds of letters and phone calls by those who are interested in this work. The church is publishing the Branch magazine and other literature which is helping those who are to be called out of the LDS church to prepare to meet Christ. Roland Allred prophesied two years before his death that after he and Owen would be taken, the council would break up and the people would scatter. Roland was taken. The council did not follow him in life, and he removed the keys from them before he went to the other side of the veil. So Owen, even though he stood in place of Roland to the people at Bluffdale, does not have the keys. Roland was wise on the day of his death in saying to his brother Owen, I am depending on you, Owen. Who else would they follow because of the prejudice against myself? They would not follow me, and the sheep should not be left without a shepherd. Owen was the only one whom Roland could depend on to lead them. They now scatter because they will see that Owen and his successors do not have the keys, and then gradually they will go elsewhere. People have to find things out for themselves, and to leave them suddenly without a leader would be a catastrophe. I soberly and solemnly declare to you that Christ, through the instrumentality of Joseph Smith the prophet, as a resurrected being, has organized the branch church called Christ Church. The Lord has given marvelous revelations, and in addition has given by revelation over 160 new songs, songs of Zion, both words and music, to the church, even as it was in the days of the prophet Joseph Smith. Zion and the richness of the Spirit, once manifest, has again returned to the earth. This is the last great call by Father Michael to gather his children, preparatory to their returning to Jackson County, Missouri, to build the great temple complex there, before Christ comes in the clouds of glory upon the earth. I testify as a servant of the living God that the work of God is going on. The church is being set in order. The council of the high priesthood is being set in order. And the council of fifty and the kingdom of God is being set in order. To talk as I talk and to think as I think means that one will be excommunicated from the mother LDS church. However, the testimony of this humble servant of the Lord is that the church is in a full state of apostasy and that the temples are no longer accepted by the Lord. God has already had a new site in southern Utah dedicated for the construction of a new temple acceptable of the Lord into which the humble and spirit-filled saints can retire to for their sacred ordinances. There is nothing left in the Mother LDS Church under the present leadership to hang on to. The only thing left that will keep the gospel from falling is Christ Church, the righteous branch of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. The question is, are you and others brave enough? Do you have enough of the Holy Ghost to know what to do and what is right? Joseph Smith said that a coward could never get into the kingdom of God. Now either what I am telling you is right and the church has apostatized, or it hasn't. If it has, it is best to get all the facts so you can judge righteously. Praise the Lord for revelation and the hands and hearts of goodly men and women of the Lord. I testify that these things are of God, and I do it in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Even so, amen. Signed, Gerald W. Peterson, Sr. For further information, please contact the missionaries at right.branch at gmail.com or 1-801-769-6279. May God bless you as you search to know him. This has been a Christchurch the Branch audio production.